very interesting topic, uh, very related to nowadays uh, industry problems because uh, indeed there are a lot of spam and this spam gets new shapes, new formats all over the world in different social networks. Nowadays, as you know, uh, it's not just uh, spam content can be produced, but also so spam people can be produced, so-called syllabus, and uh, they can be produced by AI, by machine learning. AI can actually generate fake people, fake personality, fake content, and uh, of course, very important, efficient uh, algorithms are necessary to prevent this, because if this go big, then it will affect the user experience, it might confuse people, many other negative implications are possible on this. So, uh, let's talk about spam detection in our lecture five. And uh, there are a couple of references for you. You can just download uh, these papers and read a little bit. These papers are mm, more or less uh, easy to understand, so you can just uh, follow these uh, papers. And uh, let's start uh, this lecture from introducing what is spam. So it's a long lasting problem. And there were a couple of uh, emails, uh, spam filter problems have been uh, improved, right? So uh, many claims that is 99%, but of course, the definition of spam, what is spam, etc., is of course, is also another uh, question here. So for some uh, message that can be considered relevant, one user for another user can be considered spam. So this 99% of course attributes to those obviously spam messages that are harmful to everyone. So how does uh, this problem get solved? Through contents, through structures, through distribution, uh, or how are we gonna solve this problem in social networks where uh, it's not a formal communication, it's many to many communication and the data is not uh, curated, data is not efficient. So it uh, appears to be a more difficult problem. So in social networks, uh, we have a huge amounts of personal information about users. And uh, this, of course, attracts not just us, and normal users, but also spammers. And uh, spammers are looking for new ways to reach us and uh, give us some wrong messages or get some benefits from us, from our content, etc. So it's important for, for, for us to um, understand uh, could be uh, online marketing, or maybe even if you maybe you have heard about the company called Cambridge Analytica. They didn't do exactly spam messages, but they were using social media data to understand the audiences of uh, uh, of the electors in the, in the U.S. and then were trying to uh, use this information to manipulate the elections. And of course, this is one of the applications that are not legitimate and uh, similar in a sense to uh, spam and spammers, yeah? So this is one of just a few examples. Uh, there are many articles about this, you can Google it. And uh, basically let us uh, move it forward from this. <clears throat> so uh, networks, uh, social networks are in a sense, uh, can be called as a networks of trust. So uh, people share a lot of information, people are very open. Uh, and uh, that is because uh, we trust our friends, we trust our connections. Uh, these networks get bigger, they gain popularity, and uh, if somebody gets into your connections, let's say LinkedIn or some other network, it's not very easy to uh, detect this guy by yourself. Sometimes it's just somebody into your friends, you don't you know the person, but you're okay, maybe I met him somewhere and you're still adding. So, um, in fact, uh, most of us know about this uh, spam, about phishing, about viruses, but we don't really care that much, we're not that aware, and uh, therefore we still get uh, quite a bit of problems out of that. In the best case, just our information gets used, in the worst case, we get manipulated by the spammers. Uh, and, uh, of course, this technology keeps developing. So, um, in the survey that was done uh, this year, it's about 53% of users of social networks have received at least six uh, friend requests uh, or messages from somebody they, they don't want. Yeah, and uh, basically this means that all of us received a lot of these friends requests and wanted messages. 
and 45% of users, um, uh, they actually click this links posted by their friend's account, even they don't know that this person in real life. So, and sometimes, as you know, that accounts can be stolen also and used for spam. In this case, we even know the person in real life when they click and that could be some very different uh, type of content. I think you have faced that when your friend writing to you asking for money or something else. And then you ask your friend and they say, okay, my phone was uh, cracked. Somebody took my account and then they use it for spam. Uh, of course, not all uh, bot users are bad. It's like uh, microbes. Uh, in bacteria in our algorithm in our algorithm they are not all bad uh, some of them are useful we have for example telegram bots that help us uh, some uh, some bots follow social network users some update us about news uh, and uh, often uh, we uh, for example might create bots for 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 good purpose but then, then these bots get acquired and used uh, by uh, by others, not for the good purpose already. So that's many companies just uh, make money on selling uh, social media accounts for others that can be used for crawling purposes and other purposes. Uh, but if you look into, let's say, uh, Escra, San Francisco, or if you would look to um, CNN bots, those are still bots, but they are passing very useful information for people and therefore they're not getting banned and they have quite a big number of followers. Another one is, let's say, our uh, Telegram bots that post scrappers and news and post it inside. So these are all good examples of uh, good bots. You can see that San Francisco uh, uh, Scrape bot have 126k followers. Now it's actually even bigger. Uh, so this screenshot was taken last year. So uh, there are many of them. And therefore, it's also important to uh, really differentiate the good ones from bad ones and really find a way how to find the bad ones. So um, in Twitter, we have uh, short messages. Uh, we can uh, follow uh, people. That's the main paradigm is uh, following a person on Twitter. And we can uh, identify people by using their username or by real name sometimes, right, in certain cases. Uh, in Facebook, we have a private network of friends. Uh, and this is based on friend requests, uh, similar to LinkedIn. That's why Facebook and LinkedIn are pretty much interchangeable in Russia. People use Facebook as LinkedIn because LinkedIn itself is quite often blocked. Uh, so we will focus mostly on Twitter because it's like an open platform, open forum. And therefore, for spammers, it's uh, easier to get the data and of course it grows there faster and they could get more benefit. But also for the sake of research, Twitter is easier to process, as you already know. So on Twitter, uh, relationship links are directional. Uh, people can retweet message. And uh, the fact that it gets retweeted uh, usually uh, can be seen from the RT uh, processor inside before the user name. Uh, usually people use hashtags and uh, uh, you can also use hashtag for, for trading topics, similar to LinkedIn. Um, uh, of course, because it's popular, it gets uh, quite a bit of spam inside. So spam is ma malicious uh, phishing scam content or URL. Um, and of course, uh, spam gets uh, more successful when they start realizing the uh, social relationship. So uh, a scenario of this could be that a spammer can put some URL and then inside this URL could be some advertisement, can be some misleading content behind that. And that is not related to the hashtag. Yeah, because hashtag is used to make this content popular, but the actual URL inside behind is uh, not related to Hashtag. You can see their example in the picture. So we have Music Monday, but the, uh, the, 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 the URL itself it goes to the different websites, uh, magicdrugsite.cm, right? So it's different. So this is an example of a spam. So, uh, and uh, yeah, and, uh, then it's actually an advertisement from the Toronto Drug Store. So. This, this is how it works. This is like misleading, misusing information. Uh, we also have uh, quite a number of suspended profiles. Actually, the number you see, 82,274, this is uh, a data of 2017. I didn't find the, the most recent data, but even a few years ago, I guess uh, Twitter was uh, 
very, very, uh, 2012, sorry, 2012. But Twitter was very, very uh, active in banning profiles from very beginning. And of course now this is uh, millions of profiles have been banned on Twitter and other social networks. So uh, Twitter indeed suspends our accounts. So uh, how do uh, users help Twitter or other social networks to figure out that some account is spamming and uh, to suspend it? So uh, we can report spam. So you can go inside this message and you say, report this account as spam. This feature is available on every social network. Uh, this is how we uh, trigger alert about particular website, uh, about particular user. But it's also how we train machine learning models inside Twitter to basically report those unwanted accounts. And then uh, uh, we can also uh, uh, post uh, tweet with uh, spam and then we can put the username inside there. So this is another way. Uh, so this profile, the spam is actually uh, get uh, monitored by Twitter itself and then therefore everything around that is uh, spam. So maybe you haven't heard about this approach, but this is how it works. And a uh, good thing here is this is a way to um, collect a very huge, uh, nice data for our research because uh, we uh, literally get access to uh, uh, what uh, uh, to 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 uh, data that people are triggering in particular spam accounts across the Twitter. So we have this information. We kind of have manually label ground truths, and we can uh, train our spam prediction models. So, uh, of course, uh, report service is also abused, and sometimes uh, spam reports non-spam users to just uh, confuse the uh, social network system. And sometimes legitimate uh, people mistakenly uh, trigger this uh, anti spam action. So, this is also possible. So, we can see uh, that there is a kind of taxonomy of the social spam. So, we have accounts, like a structure. So, we have accounts. Uh, we have a social graph around spam. So, basically, this is uh, our followers and followings. Uh, we have uh, mentions of the people inside. Uh, you can see there's a user mentioned to Tobias uh, Grandes uh, J.O., right? And we have uh, hashtags that can uh, be uh, used. We have URLs that the account leads to, and uh, uh, this all information helps us to predict the spam. Uh, if you go to uh, general spam account users, you will see that the majority of them, about 90%, have less than 10 followers. So the low number of followers is a very strong indicator of being spam. And that's why, for example, if you will register account on Instagram and you wouldn't post too much content and you wouldn't have too much followers, if you suddenly start uh, doing some actions, Instagram might trigger you as a spammer just because this uh, number of followers uh, is uh, quite, uh, quite uh, meaningful statistics for the social networks to really figure out whether you're spam or not. Uh, usually spammers don't really care to build the uh, social graph around them, to build connections because it's not the main purpose for them to exist. And uh, uh, they usually mention uh, other uh, spam accounts in 50, uh, 52%, and they also use uh, different uh, hashtags and trends in 70% of spam accounts, right? So they use hashtags to distribute. So if you just look at this statistic, uh, if you see the regular Twitter user, the following is uh, quite uh, distributed among a number of followers, a number of followings, right? The, 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 the ratio. We can bring, build some trend line. But you can see that for, uh, for, this, for the spam accounts, you actually are getting much more following people and much less followers, right? So most of them are actually uh, follow uh, follow others much more often than somebody else following them. This is simply because uh, it's much easier for us to follow somebody else than uh, for us to make sure that uh, somebody else following us, right? They have to believe our content, but for us, we can just follow as many as possible. And this is another reason why, let's say, Instagram recently uh, don't let you follow too many uh, users. So in the beginning when your account is small, so if you start just open account and start following your friends, it might happen then Instagram might ban you or Twitter may ban you and say, oh, you are, you are behaving like a spam user because you are following too many people around. Yeah, so 
And this was when users are doing the create account, they start following everybody. People sometimes start following them back and therefore they get this kind of follower follower relationship and then they start look more legitimate. This is strategy and uh, this is what we do not want to uh, happen with the real accounts. It's what's happening with fake accounts. So um, this is also uh, high quality uh, spammers, right? And high quality uh, spam balls and also so-called seedless. Uh, this is like another um, uh, another type of uh, of a profile that actually can be used. So uh, if you look at it overall, you'll see that this uh, profile is uh, looks quite real, but this profile is spam, and you can see it from uh, multiple criteria, right? So so now I'm showing you what like I can see the real, real, uh, real part of this profile. Yeah, but then uh, if you look into the uh, let's say uh, here, here, here image is a stock image, right? So this image has been taken from a, from a stock library which can be found. And uh, the reason why this uh, was like that is because the user was building originally the her own profile, but the profile has been uh, stolen and therefore we receive uh, a spam account. So this is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite dangerous. And uh, this, is, this is the situation. So we take a two minutes break, and after that we continue to type of spam balls. So let's talk about uh, different types of spam bots. Uh, maybe you've heard that maybe you were thinking that spam bots only have uh, one of you few um, types, but in reality, there's many types of spam bots we can talk about. So let's discuss them. So, um, okay, um, we uh, have uh, display bots, and uh, these display bots are uh, uh, basically they are. Uh, uh, follow this classification uh, on the different delivery. So the displayer bot is a uh, bot that only displays some spam, right? And they only put it in their own uh, content. So in order to view spam, you have to actually have to visit their own profile. And of course, it's the least effective way, right? Because uh, you have to somehow find a way how to find this display bot and then you can see. But of course, they also are less harmful because they're less effective. So we have so-called bragger bots. Um, uh, bragger bots uh, post messages on their own feed, right? So uh, they uh, put some messages inside, they put status updates on Facebook, they put tweets on Twitter, and uh, as a result, spam message get distributed. And it get also shown on the victim feeds, right? So you need to follow this bragger bot, and then after that, you you'll see uh, the, uh, the spam content. Uh, but of course, the spam is not only shown on the victim's profile, but, but also in uh, uh, the page that is visited by somebody else. So it kind of combines the, uh, the features of the previous, uh, of the previous uh, display bot to, uh, to get with this uh, ability to show on others' uh, accounts content. So this is a bragger bot, bot example. You can see that uh, this account actually uh, follows and uh, re, 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 reiterates with, with his own name, right? So uh, this is how it works. So we also have a poster bot. Uh, so these poster bots, they, they can send direct messages on Facebook, uh, 
the message can be also post on the victim's wall. Uh, this is considered to be the most effective spamming because it reaches a greater number of people. But of course, uh, the uh, social networks also fight against this type of spammers much more uh, severely, much more actively as compared to other spam types of spam posts. So, for example, on LinkedIn, if you'll be sending a lot of uh, messages to different people, especially if they're not in your uh, first order connections, or if you'll be doing too many, or if your messages will be similar, you'll be very, very fast triggered as an automation bot type of user. So there is also Whisper, a bot, with this kind of funny name, yeah, so uh, uh, this uh, bot send uh, the private messages to their victims. Uh, but for the poster bots, uh, maybe uh, this message is addressed to specific users, and uh, in case of the, uh, in the Whisper bots, they send only private messages, right? So let's say the previous type of bot might, uh, might be posting on somebody else, uh, on somebody else's um, uh, profile, but in this case, a uh, whisper bot will be on the same kind of messages. They're quite common on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, in Instagram, there is an official software called Instagram Direct Message Sender. Uh, LinkedIn is called LinkedIn Helper. All these are examples of uh, the whisper bots because they don't uh, post on others, so they don't like really do harmful activities, but they could do a lot of spamming into sending the information to others. So uh, spam can be detected in uh, several levels, on the message level, on the profile level, on the campaign level, level. and uh, let's discuss these levels one by one after uh, a two minutes break. So let's talk first about the message level spam detection. Uh, the different uh, spam detection strategies. And uh, if you want to detect uh, spam, uh, if you do want to perform spam detection at the message level, you'll be looking, at, for, of course, for some certain content examples inside the, inside the message, such as spam words, spam URLs, etc. And uh, if you'll be going further into account level, you'll be looking for some speed spam tweets or grace automation. And if you'll be looking campaign level, you'll be looking for the relationships between different spamming accounts. So message level, uh, traditional approach is similar to email spam detection because email is exactly doing this on a message level. And so you can look for uh, some spam content like car loans for bad credit. Yeah? Uh, you can train machine learning models like uh, text detection machine learning that you'll be able to extract this kind of uh, very likely uh, spam spam type of uh, messages and also you can see the uh, other types of spam content such as url yeah so there are different uh, ways of uh, performance this detection there are some blacklists so blacklist is basically the same as in twitter when you trigger spam users many people trigger the same guys and it's considered to be a spam and blacklisted and also some heuristics approaches and could look into the content inside. So let's say you have a message level, uh, it does to build a message level spam detector. So you have some account, you have a spam message uh, that has been spread in the social network. So 
uh, you can uh, send the uh, message URL to spam detector. Spam detector will uh, go fetch content, uh, see whether uh, this uh, content is a spam content, how relevant this content to the uh, to the uh, original writing inside the account, whether this URL is relevant to the rest of the content, and if it is, uh, let's say, it's spam, then, uh, then then the decision of the spam detector will be triggered as a spam, and then the message will be either delivered to message recipient or not. Yeah, so this is like how spam detector can do in machine learning model. So uh, for for the blacklist. Uh, uh, so this content in blacklist can be done in several ways. It can be uh, looking for duplicates URLs, uh, can be image can be get blacklisted for numbers can be uh, blacklisted, email addresses can be blacklisted. And if all these things uh, like we have like separate hashes of lists of different indicators, like say duplicate URLs or images, then you can compare this content actually to a new content where you want to detect whether it's spam or not, and then we can make a decision. Uh, of course, we also have uh, the problem of URL shorteners as well services, so we don't really have original uh, URL. And therefore, we have to go to this, uh, to, to follow this URL shortening service to get the URL actually. And we cannot see the true destinations, right? So we have uh, hundreds of shorteners around the world. And uh, if you want to uh, put the uh, URL inside blacklist, you need to have actually a final URL. But uh, the only way for you to get the final URL is to click the existing URL. So you already spend your resources. You already have to spend the resources of the shortening service. And then only then you can really match it to the blacklist that you have. So this is uh, actually a disadvantage. So, uh, I mean, I, I think you are familiar with, with uh, URL shortening services, but this is just like an example. Yeah, so it's original site is uh, spammer.com, bad site, in fact, your PC HTML, right? Like, but then in Bitly, hello, I will look at AL and IKV, and another user might uh, create exactly the same URL, but transform it to another BitLI, and then to the end, we will get the situation when we uh, when we cannot uh, when we cannot have it uh, when we cannot have it uh, correct. So uh, then uh, there is also of course the corresponding issues of this approach and the issues are accuracy, uh, yeah, so uh, scalability and whether we can do it in real time because of these problems of opening the actual page to define to, to detect the actual URL. So of course there is also heuristic approaches. We can analyze the content of the spam message. We can extract features. We can do some classification based on machine learning algorithms. And uh, if you will be asking me on what kind of features you can use for for uh, detecting spam on the message level, of course it can be number of words from a list of spam words. Yeah, so it's like, like a spam words top list, pretty much. Uh, just number of words because uh, spam messages usually have a different number of words inside, a repetitive words, number of numbers inside, number of characters, data numbers, number of URLs, number of cache tags, number of user mentions, number of times that it has been replied. Yeah, so because people reply the tweet means this is probably a genuine tweet, unless other replies are also from spam accounts, which is a campaign level. Spamming, which is we're going to touch a bit later. Yeah, so this is a list of features, and you can use other features to uh, train your machine learning model to do this detection. You can come up with some good uh, approaches, uh, looking for emoticons, looking for uh, MBTI, uh, uh, pro, uh, um, sorry, not MBTI, WC approach that we discussed before, and other NLP features to basically figure out whether this is a spam message or not. Uh, so, Message level uh, spam detection is not most effective approach. And the reason is uh, uh, because a message is uh, very much very disjoint from the account, very disjoint from the context. It doesn't have a context. And if it doesn't have context, usually this automatically means that uh, we cannot really monitor the history and decide whether this uh, is a spam message or not. But if you go further into campaign level detection, etc., we probably could do it a better job. So we can uh, jump on that. So other methods can 
help for it's a dynamic because your handles in dynamic nature of social media they're more efficient and they're more robust so let's discuss a profile of spam detection in a few minutes So now let's talk about the profile level spam detection, right? So how, how can profile level spam detection be applied and how it can be used uh, to improve the performance of spam detection filters. So a whole idea is uh, to do it on a level of social media profile or level of a bot. And overall, uh, this is not just applicable to spam detection, but pretty much any machine learning that get applied into social media. There are certain uh, tasks where we want to uh, detect, let's say, sentiment that we'll be doing on the message level because we believe every message that the user posts will have its own ad sentiment. But beyond sentiment, let's say, uh, bot detection, right? Let's say personality profiling. Let's say uh, customer persona detection when you're trying to figure out what kind of product this guy might want to see advertisement about and what kind of product he doesn't want to see. It's all, uh, it's a all profile level, at least profile level techniques, or can be even campaign level, but at least profile level techniques. And this is approach uh, that you usually get adopted. So we're gonna analyze the behavioral pattern of the users plus the content, right? So it includes the previous approach. Um, um, so uh, there are different types of uh, profile uh, level spamming accounts. So some uh, accounts being created for spam, like a career spammer, and some accounts can be compromised by spam. Remember, there was a lady who had a stock a picture and her profile picture. She seemed to be quite real in the beginning, but then she was compromised and now account is for spam. So how to generate a spam traffic for spam sites? Uh, maybe uh, this, uh, they, they stay logging for quite a long time. And uh, uh, there are many searching mechanisms that give preferential treatment to profiles that are currently logged into the system, right? So this is one way, like if you're logged in, you're gonna get more content in uh, many social networks. But also they're sending friend requests to other users, so they're more aggressive. Those spamming accounts that keep, like remember there was a distribution of uh, much more friend requests as compared to much, much less followers. So it's like uh, how it works. And if you want to detect um, uh, spam on, on uh, the account level. One very natural solution to this is uh, to treat this problem as, uh, as a problem for as a classification problem, right? So this is how it can be used. So it's a machine learning problem. We can analyze the content for similar tags, for similar URL. We also can analyze the behavior. We consider the temporal component, the time component, and uh, we can probably even from distribution, you notice that spam spread messages more frequently and regularly as compared to the regular users, uh, regular in terms of time patterns as well. And uh, they don't have a, not construct a real social network around them, right? 
they might have uh, other spam browsers following them or some random users who also don't look at who to follow. So every time you follow a person in social networks that you don't know, if this person is a spammer, then actually you're helping spammer to develop because social network will be less sensitive to this user simply because you, a real legitimate user, can follow them, right? So it's all these uh, important parts. And if you want to define a general framework, of course, you want to do uh, data collection for it and you collect it from the HoneyNet accounts. Uh, then you want to investigate how spammers are using social networks. You want to identify features that uh, basically uh, separate spammers from non spammers. And you want to build some algorithm or some tool to detect uh, these spammers. So, honey, honeypot profiles. Right? Let's start from this. Uh, it has another interesting name. Uh, and basically, this profile are, are created to lock traffic received from other users from, of the network, right? So, they are like a loggers, logger account. Yeah, so they, they, they don't have much activity. They generate statistical data regarding friend requests received, names, messages received, etc. And they're called honey profiles due to their uh, resemblance uh, to the uh, concept of the honey pots, right? Like if, if you know the concept of honey pots. So, uh, or like a, like a trap, like a, like, a, like a cheese for the mouse, right? This way. So, uh, computer security researchers who uh, who, who do research on uh, also the, on the spamming, they use this kind of accounts to observe and analyze uh, different uh, non-proper malicious activity and uh, basically also to find the spammer user. So it's like a trap for spammer. And uh, there are features on the, on the profile level or on the bot level uh, spammer that can be used. Uh, so um, is a is a ratio. Uh, is a of, of uh, connection, right? Is a URL ratio, is a message similarity, is a friend choice, like who you choose to follow and who choose to follow you, how many messages you send, how many free, uh, friend uh, numbers uh, requests you have been. So, uh, following follower ratio is basically about is a is a ratio of how many followers and how many followings follow you, right? So. Uh, for spammers, this FF ratio is, is larger because they usually follow much more people than follow them. Yeah, and for normal people, it's uh, around one. It can be even less than one. So, let's say uh, uh, people who follow you is much like like for really influencer accounts, FF is very small because the number of followers is much much bigger than the the number of followings that this uh, this account is follows. And for spammers, it's opposite. Yeah, they have also URL uh, ratios, like bots are likely to send URLs and messages to attract users to server pages. So if you uh, compute messages containing URLs and number of total messages, you can get this URL ratio that can help you to um, do better job as a feature for uh, account level spam detectors. Uh, most bots use uh, very similar messages. Well. In the past, now already not because they can generate machine learning generated messages and train this based on the uh, on the, on some historical content of a real user. But in the past, most of the bots were sending quite similar messages, right? Based on some just, just some patterns. They actually can measure the message similarity. Yeah, so uh, pay is a set of possible message to message combinations among any two messages and uh, it's like a singular pair. So CP is a function calculating the number of words uh, two messages share, right? So basically it's just like a, like a similarity where each word is, uh, let's say it's, it can be like a cosine distance between uh, a word, uh, a word uh, uh, bag of words vectors. And then you can also have average length of messages and uh, is a number of uh, message combinations, right? So uh, then you can actually see uh, out of average length of the messages and different message combinations, uh, how often uh, the number of words, the number of similar words in, inside this, each of the pair, and then you can compare this message uh, message similarity metric, which is also another uh, useful feature for spam detections. So profiles that have similar messages will have a low value of S, right? So this message similarity will be low. Yeah, so this is important because it's an uh, inverse uh, to, uh, 
as compared to just counting the similar messages. Please uh, switch off your uh, your microphones. Uh, so I, I, I can hear somebody have a microphone. Um, I'm switching you. Okay, uh, so uh, except for that, we also have a friend choice. So uh, uh, if uh, so French show is basically trying to find the profiles that uh, where was the profile going to pick a friend or not. And French choice is total number of names on the profile with a friend and number of distinct first names. Yeah, so uh, basically what it helps, it looks uh, whether your friend's uh, profile list is uh, diverse enough as compared to, uh, to the real, real world situation, right? Like what are the names of uh, this uh, spamming balls around? And legitimate accounts have a value closer to one. Spammers could have values of two or even bigger. So you might have, uh, for example, uh, some uh, maybe porn adult sites who will target users with a male male likes name only. And if all your friends are males, or even your friends have a similar names, then it it could be that uh, your your account that you are investigating is a spam account. Uh, so messages sent now number of messages sent by profile most spam both send less than 20 messages and uh, friends number number of friends as profile has basically uh, profiles with, uh, with with a lot of friends as less likely to be spammer than profile with a few friends and if there's a lot of followers and most of these followers are not spammers then it's likely that this profile is also not a spamming profile uh, unless it was compromised and we can do some behavioral analysis so we can uh, uh, see as a, how regular the uh, tweets, let's say a Twitter tweet gets spread. We can do a square test of three times, times uh, seconds of the minute and seconds of the hour. And if you if you do that, you will see this kind of interesting distribution, right? So you can see that uh, uh, if you look into in, in one in one. Uh, of the scales, you put the minutes, and uh, inside uh, another scale, you put the second bit inside. You can see the very regular patterns. On the left side, you have uh, clear uh, clear that the message is going to be sent in a particular time, uh, in a particular time intervals. An interval between messages also very uh, very uh, very just pretty much follow the same pattern. On the right side, you can see that most of the uh, messages has been that most of the message occurrences have been on the bottom. So basically, they sent uh, uh, in the in the uh, in the beginning of the minutes, right? Most of them have been sent at the beginning of the minutes, and then they evenly distributed among uh, the seconds in an hour. So so basically, this is just attempt to reformat the distribution, plot it in the picture, and see whether distribution is more or less like a human distribution. Now it's very very uh, very regular, especially on the left side, you can see that this kind of uh, spikes when the message gets sent exactly at the same time, this definitely means that there is some automation. So these both users are likely to be spammers, but if you look in the real uh, tweets, a user, we can see uh, something like this, which is much more uniform, and that is usually means it's a real user. So of course, if all this information can fit into machine learning model, and have enough of data, Machine learning model is likely to identify based on this uh, temporal patterns whether it's a spam behavior or it's a real behavior. So, uh, if you want to train a spam detector for this particular research that is given here as example, you can. Uh, be, uh, the researchers have picked up 500 spam accounts for training, and they come from uh, these honey post profiles, or they can just manually choose them, or they can just collect those uh, profiles that have been reported by other Twitter users by at spam user mentioned to the trend classifier, and they can run the spam um, detection algorithms. So now we're going to talk about campaign level spam detection, and let's have a two minute break before that.
Okay, and let's talk about uh, campaign levels computation. So uh, you probably understand that um, spammers are not just a bunch of bot accounts that are doing some uh, naughty things, right? Uh, Spammer runs usually multiple accounts. The spread the spam tweets a lot and let this account support each other. Mm -hmm. And that's called this spam campaign, right? It's like an advertisement campaign that uh, runs ads to spread a legitimate real message. It's also spam campaigns to try and build this hype around some not topic about some malicious website or etc. So that's how it works. And of course, the goal is to find a related account in which spammers spread similar messages, right? So once you can figure out that uh, two accounts, like in your left side, sending the same uh, message, I can see the same message, then that usually means that it's a spam campaign. Uh, and this is a real case of a double kill campaign with multiple accounts, right? So you can see uh, in, the, in the bottom by, by Viagra Online from USA, B Viagra Online from USA, right? So it's like a adult uh, uh, pill, right? And of course, uh, this type of uh, medicine not always get uh, able to uh, recommend as a pharmaceutical category on a uh, regular account. So quite often we are getting this uh, advertised as a spam. So uh, content are very similar since they are sent by one spammer. Uh, there might be some uh, uh, some uh, URLs different. Let's say in the second case, the bit li. In the first case, it's both, both, both dogs, so different very shortening services. But uh, the, the uh, overall idea is the same as you can detect that. So uh, characteristics of spam campaign is uh, some uh, can be uh, sent less than one message a day, some more, some send mix of spam and non-spam messages. This is like the most, uh, the most dangerous one because it attempts to uh, confuse you and not to show that there is spamming behavior. Uh, they're active at different times with different random behavior. And the fact that it's random is also actually good because uh, humans, they follow some normal distribution usually, right? They're not random, but if it's really random, mm -hmm. uniform random, then it's actually a very good feature to detect the spam accounts as well. And of course, it uh, it's, uh, it's has some balanced uh, distribution. So some, uh, some bots with low uh, message per day and low uh, non-spam message per day will also last longer, right? So basically, uh, if it's a very active spam, then it will get uh, cracked much faster by system, by social network system uh, spam detection mechanism. And it's a, like a slow one, it will get cracked slower. So um, uh, for common goals, mm, three URLs or cache detectors for messages, uh, all these uh, spam campaigns are to, uh, exist, and this is usually the common goal. They distribute some URL, distribute some hashtag, distribute some other mentioned accounts. Um, so we can define some baseline for the spam detection campaign. So uh, if you like, like a simple solution, right? So we can uh, define some uh, cluster by binary feature vector. Uh, uh, so an N is the total number of spam URLs, and merge clusters with URLs that are with URLs in common, right? So if you have common URLs in two clusters, you merge this cluster together. Uh, so uh, this is uh, one way to do it. Uh, and this will be like URL clustering approach. And of course, it has uh, one uh, shortcoming here that it will not merge uh, if uh, spam cluster don't share URLs. So let's say use the URL shortening services. So overall, uh, this URL shortening services, your spam detection approach will be even slower because we have to load the website or just wouldn't work in because uh, URL shortening service provide different shortened hashes for different URLs. Yeah, but this can be a baseline. Uh, there can be other features that you can incorporate in your spam detection model to identify the spam campaign. Uh, it can be profile name templates, like similar profile names, similar actual names, or similar naming or nonsense names profile pictures, uh, typical times when spamming is typical, ha happening, typical hashtags and mentions, and uh, else we can look where URLs point to. They all point to similar websites, or then that could be also uh, the reason to define that this is a uh, spam message. And there is also uh, C-plus detection, right? And all this is C-plus like a 
high-level type of spam accounts. So Sybil is a fake identifier controlled by attackers, right? It's like a fake identity controlled by attackers. And uh, so they uh, uh, can be a friendships for you. They, uh, they include uh, secondary accounts inside there. So they uh, basically, how to say, these guys are pretty much a real, 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 real account. And uh, the sibling attacks usually used by advertisement, by malware, by phishing, right? Can be used in a very, uh, in a very bad ways. So you can have some malicious URLs inside there. But these people really look like a very, uh, very, very real. They can uh, steal uh, real user information. Uh, so uh, space, uh, spies use Facebook to steal another chip details, right? So they, they can actually use the actual information from other users to uh, replace their profile info. They can use their messages. Uh, they can even uh, try to uh, emphasize, they can even try to um, attack uh, or emphasize the political outcomes, uh, run or campaigns around not an ethical products, etc. Right? So Sibyls are quite uh, quite common and uh, this is something that's uh, quite a problem for for modern social networking. Uh, so uh, social networks are trying to stop automated account creation, right? They create captures. And uh, attackers, uh, spammers, they are trying to crowdsource the capture solving, right? You can see that some researchers do it in a in a conference way. So social networks are trying to uh, detect this uh, spam accounts and URL they use uh, spam detection features, real block list, and user report. And uh, attackers trying to generate realistic profiles. So they complete the bio info, complete the profile picture, and this again uh, has been uh, published. A paper like this has been published in one of the very top conferences. So uh, from here, you can see that the profile that we uh, went through before, it has uh, was created automatically by finding the capture. And also, it's quite realistic, right? So the bio is correct, et cetera. And social media is trying to uh, detect this uh, uh, simple communities. So basically, find where the symbols are. And then at the same time, uh, attackers are trying to also put uh, their own part in how to uh, build the communities in such a way so that they look very, very real. So how does the civil uh, uh, graph-based uh, civil community detection may be blocked? So there is a community of civils. There's a, a community of uh, real, real humans, right? And these connect communities are interconnected. Uh, we know that symbols uh, have a difficulty of friending normal users. Yeah, so because, I mean, people are sensitive, people have intuition about who is real, who is fake. Uh, so therefore, symbols uh, try to make communities between themselves. They interconnect each other, and that's why they get a nice uh, ratios, nice metrics, nice features, and it's harder to detect them on a uh, profile campaign level. But you can uh, detect this bit on a graph level and somehow, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, there are some studies that show that uh, if you get enough ground truth, uh, you can actually uh, detect signals from real users and uh, see how this their communities can be uh, interpreted and uh, taken out from the uh, real user communities. Yeah, so. Uh, so this is, is how it works, and let's let's see on another approach on this. So there is also some uh, static uh, uh, profile analysis uh, was proposed. Static profile analysis approach was proposed for single detection. So this was used to leverage human intuition to detect fake profiles, crowdsourcing, but also as uh, successful user studies showed that uh, it scales with a high accuracy. So uh, at the same time, profile-based detection has limitations. So as we detect, as we discussed before, so uh, some profiles are easy to mimic, but still LinkedIn you can easily mimic a CEO profile just copy from other profile, and uh, uh, this information can be found online. And to uh, solve that problem, we want to look in the user behavior. 
So how this uh, symbols uh, browse social network and can build some behavioral models and look at click streams. So uh, what this all means, it basically means that uh, social networks like LinkedIn, they have, except for profiles, they have enough of information on how people behave, how they log in, how often, what is the intervals between their activities, between messages they send. Is the same message or different? Is it a, a message to random people or is actually the, the intersect, interaction from one profile to another is a result of uh, organic natural exposure by a user of the social network? So this is like a quick click stream analysis. So click stream is a list of server side user generated events. So click stream could be profile load, link follow, photo browse, friend and invite. Yeah, so this is a click stream because it's a, like a sequence of uh, what I clicked, right? Or like sequence of my actions. It's called the click stream. And uh, uh, you can see the click stream just like a, like a database records. So it was the event uh, send friend request, it was the event visit some profile, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, in, in, so intuition behind this can be that symbols are goal-oriented. They are concentrated on specific actions. Let's say send a message and they are time limited. You have to generate a lot of these events. If they are not generating a lot of these events, then uh, they won't be efficient, right, for their task. I'll give you an example. In uh, LinkedIn, you can actually create a bot by some of the software. And this bot could uh, really follow different other people or could, could collect their names or could send them messages, uh, change, even generate and ch change uh, the content of the messages. The problem is that LinkedIn have limitation and every time when it goes beyond about 100 messages per day, there start becoming a lot of problems for this bot to really send these messages simply because uh, uh, LinkedIn will start uh, apply all these uh, simplest detection models on this type of user. And if the message is the same, if the uh, distance between uh, messages is uh, short, in time, time distance, or even is the same interval, then of course uh, this kind of activity will be detected and uh, triggered. Uh, so uh, what you can do is analyze some uh, ground truth to extreme for simple detection. And uh, uh, there is uh, some case studies, like for example, Rakuten, there was a ground truth data set. Uh, Rakuten is, uh, uh, so not Rakuten, Ren, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. So this uh, Ren, Ren is a Chinese social networks and uh, Chinese social network like a Facebook. And it has provided uh, the, uh, the database for civil uh, detection. And uh, you can see that uh, it was 16,000 users and click streams or over 2011, it was more than 6.8 million clicks. And this uh, ground truth was provided by uh, Rand Rand security team. So uh, working on this data set, some research can be done. Uh, and uh, uh, assuming that users have many social network features, uh, symbols are usually focused on a, uh, like just a, the, the uh, as the principal explains, it was usually focused on a few actions, friend invite and some browse profiles, etc. So if you look in the normal click stream, it will be on the left side. If you look in the simple click stream, it can be on the right side. You can see right left thing, the probability of transition to each of these actions from one action to another, like a state, final state machine, is a very, uh, very, uh, very random, right? You can take more photos. Uh, you can uh, you can go to the notifications and you go to the end. You can uh, post blog and can post another blog. You can from blog you can uh, from from initial stage you can go to posting a, a picture. But you can see that for for the Sibyl, uh click stream is very very uh, very 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 regular, very very nice looking, and that basically shows that uh, this is uh, this is a uh, uh, some both doing the things. So on the top, you can see a typical example of the spammer. And uh, on the bottom, you can see a typical example of uh, the crawler. Yeah, so spammers, they do a lot of friend invites to spam and spread information. Crawlers do a lot of profiling bros. And if you look at their click streams, which social networks, of course, are doing to uh, figure out the uh, spammers and crawlers, right? they can, of course, detect this fairly easily. And if you look further in the click streams of 
course, is not just friend advice, browse profiles, etc. There's many other things, including how you move your mouse, uh, whether you are moving from one profile ID to another profile ID, or actually you are you have some um, sequence of actions. So let's say if I move profile X, then profile Y, then profile Z, and these guys are not friends of each other, they didn't interact with the same uh, images, or maybe uh, these uh, profiles have uh, some uh, issues inside there, right? So like they, they were triggered to the siblings in the past. That is very likely that this, likely that this is a, a spam behavior. Uh, but let's say if you're browsing the, the list of your friends, you see the new content of this list and you click it and you go there, then it's a different issue. This could be a real much more hectic distributed activities from a real user. And this can be used. So siblings and normal users have a very different click patterns. And that's what we can find. Uh, so we want to differentiate them. Then we can uh, measure the similarities between uh, quick streams. Uh, and we can map the user's click streams into similarity graphs, where click streams are nodes, like uh, represented by the features of uh, uh, click streams, and edge weights indicate the similarity of two click streams. Yeah, so or we compare one to another, like these two. Uh, uh, each of them is a node, and how similar they are in terms of the probabilities of transition is the, the, the edge between the, the nodes in these graphs. Uh, so clusters in the similarity graph capture user behaviors, right? Each cluster represents a certain type of click behavior pattern, and we hypothesize that civil and normal users fall into different clusters. So we have a click stream long, we find a similarity graph, we uh, uh, cluster people into different graphs, and uh, let's say second and right ones is a good cluster, and then in the bottom it can be a civil cluster, right? So they're inter interconnected to each other, the click streams are similar, and uh, they are, of course, uh, part of this uh, civil cluster. And this is how detection can be worked. So if you have a new click stream, you actually can see to which cluster this new click stream is more similar uh, as compared to all. And if you see that it's more similar to the civil cluster, you can have a pretty much a real-time uh, detection system for civils. This is also called like a classification uh, classification via clustering type of machine learning approach. And then you can split them in different databases and a new CBO information you'll contribute into uh, the into the your database. So later this CBO will contribute to uh, detect other symbols, diversify your approach. Uh, this is like a detail. So we have user one and user two. Uh, we have a click sequence model, so order of clicks uh, or events. A, B, C, D, A, time-based model, sequence of inter-arrival time, right? basically the times between uh, these clicks. And we have also a complete model, a sequence of click events with time, right? So we have A at time one, and B at time two, and C at time three, and D at time four, and then we can get A again. Yeah, so uh, we can uh, also define this kind of click stream similarity functions. So uh, common subsequence, for example, right? So we have uh, uh, sequence A, B, A, 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 C. We get the A grams, A, B, and, and grams of uh, click sequence one, click sequence two. And grams is the same as uh, N grams in uh, national language processing, right? So basically the combinations of uh, certain size. And then you can uh, uh, define these common subscriptions as uh, D1 to the defined. Uh, then you can also define it with accounts. Uh, then you can do it like just like a Euclidean distance. So basically, you count that uh, a, a, a was two times, and also A was two times, as well, both steps will be two. Uh, then uh, you can uh, see the, the, the n grams would just be also only one, but A, a it was also only one, A, B, also only one, A, a B, only one time. So what is n grams? It's all combinations of uh, sequences from, from one to K length, and in our case, K is three, right? So we can see this uh, um, uh, vector representation, and we can compute the median distance between the click streams. And you also can add time to the sequence. Uh, you can uh, bucketize them, like put them in the buckets of arrival time, and then code time into the sequence, apply the same sequence similarity function. So you can actually um, time one, time two, time three, time four, then we have a total time, and then for different times you have uh, different buckets of your uh, 
n-grams uh, representation, then you can compare the whole thing together. This is a way to do it. Uh, then you can do the click stream clustering. So you have a, a click stream to the nodes and edges as a weighted similarity score of two user click streams. And then you can uh, cluster single click streams together. Uh, minimum edge weight card, graph partition, user metis, uh, many, many other clustering approaches. Not really a topic of this lecture. You can go into your uh, nodes for your uh, discrete mathematics um, and uh, uh, basically see how, how, how the graphs can be clustered. Uh, if you perform a, a, a cluster on ground truth data, it will produce a very accurate behavior clusters. You'll get only 3% of false negatives and 1% of false positives, whereas normal users are considered to be civils. Then after that, you can further do a, a classification based on new clicks based on the approach I just described above. Uh, so you assign the unclassified click stream to the nearest cluster, and if the nearest cluster is a civil cluster, then you consider that your click stream is also the uh, the, the civil. Uh, how to assign to the nearest cluster? Nearest neighbors, nearest cluster, nearest cluster is the center, right? So basically, you'll be comparing not to the average of the cluster, but to the center of the cluster, like essentials. And uh, uh, it helps a lot. Uh, you're still getting uh, uh, false negatives quite high, so you still get some symbols uh, be detected as the real users. But overall, you can see the error rate is quite low for this type of tasks. And uh, beyond three percent accuracy, you can do a, a quite good job in detecting this uh, uh, account through the clickstream analytics. And that's what uh, the uh, these modern social network algorithms are doing. And that's why it's uh, sometimes quite difficult to crawl data from social network because your behavior can be uh, quite uh, better to, uh, um, quite easier to, uh, to identify. Just if you compare a bit of these algorithms, you can see that nearest neighbor clusters is uh, also faster than scalable, uh, so as good as others, and probably uh, nearest, nearest cluster is probably the best approach you can uh, apply here. You can use also some semi-unsupervised approach. If you like, you don't have big ground truth data set, you need to find a method to label clusters. So you can actually use a small set of known good users to color clusters, and then you add these known users in the existing clusters. Uh, so this cluster that contain good users are good clusters. And then after that, uh, those clusters that don't have much good users are considered to be a civil clusters. In this case, you can uh, do uh, uh, this task with a, with a much smaller number of uh, uh, with a much smaller number of necessary data for you to have. Uh, there are a couple of real world experiments. So on LinkedIn, you scan 40k ground truth users click streams and flag the two other previous unknown symbols. On Red Brand, it was one million, like 22 suspicious users, and it defines a new attack. And uh, many other research has been done. You can read about it global scholar. So uh, there's also challenges. Uh, you you needed to uh, uh, they can slow down the clicks click speed. Let's say in LinkedIn, if you use a LinkedIn helper and you do less than 100 actions per day, uh, very unlikely LinkedIn will trigger you. You have a lot of resources and you can have many accounts that it will actually help you to still do your malicious job if you have it in mind, right? So it's a challenge for a community. Or uh, symbols can generate the normal actions like following somebody, like uh, going to other accounts. And this is another, um, like basically, symbols are mimicking normal users. And there are some practical changes, like how to update behaviors class or how to handle the evolution of uh, people's behavior, etc., etc., etc how to integrate with other existing uh, detection techniques, right? Profile techniques, content-based detectors, and uh, the uh, detection based on the campaign. So to conclude, spam on social networks is uh, abundant and successful. 25% of URLs lead to spam, and clicks throughs over 10 times this of email spam. Yeah, because people trust social networks. Registrations, a spam detection method is, is not useful in social networks because social networks relationships are much more complex because the nature of the data is different. So adapting some social elements for detecting spam is very useful. 
and uh, campaign level detection particularly is a very good way of uh, increasing the performance of this. There are three main approaches, message profile, campaign level detection, and sophisticated spammer uh, handling, CBOs. And here maybe I'll add one more. Nowadays, social uh, modern generative networks can generate uh, new content that is very, very hard to really like use similarity function to compare it to other content that detect the CBOs. No, this content will be really new creature based on the millions of data points uh, uh, this uh, generative networks GANs have been trained based on. And therefore, there's a really big task for Facebook to be able to not just detect the CBOs, but detect the CBOs that use content generative neural networks to generate their content. It's really very similar to users and for 2019, 2020, uh, I think a big research group on Facebook is really working on how to do this really well. Yeah, so I, they are working right now. So if you're interested in this topic, maybe it's a good time for you to try yourself to be hired on Facebook because this is one of the biggest problems nowadays, using neural networks to find other generative neural networks and make them really updatable. So, uh, okay, so the, 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 the date here is wrong. I think it's not 19th of November. Okay, let me check it again. I think it's not Monday, but overall, I want to like to remind you that we have a deadline for the labs. So hope you're doing well and you have a chance to ask uh, also for uh, assistance with, uh, with your question about the lab. You also can ask me during the consultation hours, just uh, telegram me to ask. And uh, you need to start forming your mini groups for the final projects. And uh, you need to think what you want to do of your uh, final project. So those uh, in a group, in a, in a physical in St. Petersburg, you can form groups between yourself. Those other uh, course participants that are not, uh, you could form groups remotely between yourself as well. And let us know what are your groups and slowly let us know what it will be your project. Thank you very much and have a good day and tutorial ahead. Bye.